Hello everyone, I'm Derek. Welcome to There Will Be Cars. If you're not familiar with my channel, I review new vehicles that manufacturers send me and I bring you my driving impressions. So there will be trucks, there will be SUVs, and of course, there will be cars. In fact, I'm driving a car this week. This is the all-new 2022 Toyota GR86. Aside from the all-new styling, which features these cool front vents that are actually cut through and functional. And this Supra-esque rear wing. And this curvy back end with the slightly recessed dual exhaust outlets. I like that, they don't come out too far. This also has a number of improvements over the previous generation. Gazoo Racing stiffened the new 86 in a variety of ways, including by adding diagonal cross members between the front suspension and the frame, giving the hood a diagonal frame structure instead of a honeycomb design, and at the rear, they used a structure that connects the upper and lower parts of the chassis. The old 2.0 is gone and it's been replaced with a 2.4 liter boxer four cylinder engine with port and direct fuel injection. Horsepower is up nearly 18% and torque is up by 11%. Most importantly, the torque curve has been modified. Peak torque is now available at 3700 RPM instead of 6600 RPM in the outgoing model. There are two trim levels available, the base, which starts at $27,700, and the premium model, which I have here. Aside from its extra cost track bread, emphasis on red paint, my tester here doesn't have any optional equipment, so it comes in at a final price of $33,250. That buys you standard equipment, such as 18-inch black wheels, a Torsen limited slip differential, LED exterior lighting with adaptive headlamps, heated power mirrors, heated ultra suede front seats with leather bolsters, and a variety of safety and driver assistance features, including a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, automatic high beams, blind spot detection with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sonar with rear automatic braking and more. As you can imagine, the cabin is a little on the snug side. Got this microfiber black with contrast stitching. And these nice form-fitting seats, really like these. Nicely bolstered top and bottom. Just another reminder that this is a GR car. You have a pretty simple, easy to read, effective gauge layout there. Right now I have it on the fuel economy readouts, center mounted tack with speedometer right there, and then other engine information on the right there. You can adjust the readouts using this control pad here. Go through the various options on the left. You have a nice large touch screen in the middle, but you do have physical volume and tuning knobs as well as hard buttons on the sides. The audio system has some surprises to it. You'll see what I mean when we go into the sound menu. So you have the normal settings right there, beep sound and then all the other uh, choices. So you can do the basic adjustments, equalizer, balance, fade, and then they have this thing called vocal image control and virtual stage enhancer. So you've got various settings for that. Delivers high realistic surround sound by enhancing the vocals. Okay, that's neat. So if you're listening to something unplugged or something that's very vocal heavy where you wanna to listen to their voice more than the music around them, this would be a good choice for that. And then there's sound restorer, and then virtual bass, various settings for that as well. Dynamic beat enhancer, so it's good for compressed music. And as you can tell, this car has an automatic and this is the biggest drawback to my particular tester. 
When I get on the road, I'll tell you why. And you've got some more essential controls here, traction control. You can put the car in sport mode, snow mode, and then there's even a track setting. Got heated seats, and then a cup holder or a miscellaneous items compartment right here. And that's it as far as exposed storage in the center console. I thought there might be something here like a little tray or something, but that's all just piano black trim. They, they didn't use this for storage at all. So you've got a compartment here, these doors on the sides, but as you can see, I mean, yes, you can store things in here, but this is primarily intended for two cup holders. Technically there are back seats, but as you can see, you have to have awfully short legs to fit back there. But if you're a bag of groceries, you'll fit just fine. For better or for worse, the GR86 is a very engaging car. Even if you're in normal mode and you're just commuting to the office, you feel all of the road, imperfections and everything. You also hear everything around you. There's wind noise. There is a lot of tire roar on certain road surfaces as well. The good news is this car is very engaging in all the good ways as well. The steering is heavy and steady. So when you go into a turn, you really have to push into it. You know, it's not over boosted. You're really connected to it. The brakes as well. There's no fluff in the pedal. There's no dead zone. You ask for braking power and it's there. Then there's the handling in general. It's very dialed in, it's ratcheted down, it's taut. Everything just feels set at the right level. This car is very much like the Scion FRS and the Toyota 86 that followed it. This doesn't have the same impact those cars had on me, particularly the FRS. I think mainly because this same general feeling is not new to me anymore. I'm familiar with it from the FRS and from the first generation 86. You definitely get more sound out of the exhaust in sport mode opens up. It's kind of gruff, a little rough around the edges. I know one of the complaints about the first generation 86 was the fact that it didn't have enough power. People were always complaining that it needed more power to it. I drove the FRS for a week, I drove the 86 for a week, and I gotta be honest with you, that was never an issue for me. I was perfectly fine with the output. What I really focused on more was just the suspension and the handling, just the way it felt. Speaking of power, let's do a pull. 20, foot down. Definitely not scared to rev. On the overrun. Slowing down, nice and raspy. Partial throttle. Yep, you got the hint. Shifted gears. Now at a more relaxed pace. picked it up pretty quick you know it put two and two together that you know I wanted partial throttle so it adjusted it's a nice move so now I got some turns coming up here really test out the reflexes on this car because this car is so taut and sporty it's not something that I would want to drive every day but on curvy roads it would be perfect it's in its element out here. In fact, these turns could be tighter. You know, this is such a short wheelbase car, such a small sporty vehicle that, you know, it could, it could really take on some tighter, more technical turns. I wish I had those out here. Also gives me a chance to test out the manual reflexes of the transmission. Really get into the revs. in the road wanting to deflect the front end a little bit. I mean, it is a small car, but I yeah, love the steering feel. Substantial. but not 
not too bad. I think it's a testament. The other night, I was out in uh, a 350Z with some mods on it, clearly, pulled up next to me, kept revving. I think he was trying to either bait me into racing or to just do a pull. Of course, you know, this is not my car. I wasn't having any of it. Um, but, you know, the fact that a larger, more powerful car wanted to see what this could do, I think is a good sign. I have to admit, I'm slowly changing my opinion on this automatic. At first, I really didn't like it. I felt it goes against the character of this car because this is a very elemental, engaging car. And even with the paddle shifters, the automatic is just not quite there. It's not exactly the same as a manual. You know, you don't have that interaction with the car through your hands and your feet and your ears, you know? That footwork is important, you know? It's fun, It's it connects you to the car more. And I've always enjoyed small displacement, sporty cars with a manual transmission. It's just fun to rev the daylights out of them before you shift. Now you can rev the engine in this car high before you snap off a paddle shift, but yes, that it's just not quite the same. I'm just glad Toyota continues to offer this with the manual transmission. It is kind of a shame that a lot of performance cars don't have manual transmission options. Fortunately, the 8.6 does. While the automatic is not my preferred way of changing gears in this car, and it might not be yours, the good news is you don't have to pick it. Toyota makes this with the manual. Well, everyone, that's it for my review of the 2022 Toyota GR86. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and click the like button below. If you're not a subscriber to There Will Be Cars already, please go ahead and become one. I enjoy bringing my reviews of cars to this channel, and I hope you're here to see the next one.